Peter, for the people in our audience who may not know, who were the birds? Well, the birds were a, um, the birds are often called the uh, American version of the Beatles. Uh, they were sort of the founding fathers, I guess, of, you know, a variety of genres, you know, psychedelic, uh, country rock, you know, folk rock, you know, a lot of innovation came through the birds and because of the birds. And they started in 1964, is that right? Yes, right, a as the birds, yes. Be prior to that, they were um, uh, non-affiliated folk musicians. Uh, David Crosby tells the story of people coming to hear him and uh, telling him he was playing too loud. And he sort of realized there, there was a change that needed to ma be made, and he got together with, back then, Jim McGuinn, later Roger, and, um, and Gene Clark. And what was their music initially, and how did it sort of progress over the years? Well, initially, it, uh, they were, I don't think the birds would have existed if it hadn't been for the Beatles. Um, when they were trying to figure out their sound and how they were going to go forward as a group, they went and saw the movie Hard Day's Night and watched what the Beatles did and the instruments they were playing, and from there moved forward. And so early on, it had that sort of English invasion beat to it. And then, uh, as they progressed, uh, their, the country roots sort of came out, and it became a, a more American sound, and then later the psychedelic uh, sound infiltrated. And they also uh, had an influence as folk rock as well. Yes, right, right. Um, and what are some of the songs that people would remember? Sure. Um, the, the two we, that are probably most familiar would be Eight Miles High and uh, I'll Feel a Whole Lot Better, uh, both Gene Clark songs. And uh, Mr. Tambourine Man and Turn, 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 those were some of the, the folk? Yes, and those are probably even better known, but, but written by Dylan. Mm -hmm. Do you think they still have an influence today? I mean, that, oh, uh, yeah. people say that they had a lot of influences in other bands over the years. Talk about that for a bit. Sure. I mean, it, I can't give you specific instances, but, but I, hear, you know, I'll, I hear it all the time. You know, I'll hear a riff of, of a current band and say, oh, there's the birds. And, and there are a couple compilations of bands you know, who have been inf influenced by the birds. So that's a source. Now, the event that you're having is a tribute to Gene Clark. Now, yes. most people think of Roger McGuinn, McGuinn as the leader of the group, but yes. why did you pick Gene Clark? Well, uh, he's the best. Uh, he, he's the he was a songwriter, and, and a lot of the Bird's best-known tunes were written by Clark. Uh, you know, his heart was in the music and not really in the entertainment side of, of performing, so uh, he, he's not as well known. And the reason we chose Clark was because of the documentary that's part of, you know, half of the event. Uh, it was, it's about Gene Clark, and uh, so that's why we're highlighting him. And let's talk a little bit about the event itself. Uh, sure. Go ahead. Well, the, the first half of the event is um, featuring three live bands, local bands, uh, Jeff Beam and Friends, Dominic and the Lucid, and Chicken Wire, which is uh, Jonathan Cooper's band. And uh, people may know him from Acoustic Artisans above Starbucks. So they'll perform their versions of Gene Clark or Bird songs uh, for the first hour or so of the evening and to be followed by the documentary, uh, The Bird Who Flew Alone, uh, The Triumphs and Tragedy of Gene Clark. And when was that documentary made? 2013. So it's, it's been around a couple years. And online, I've been able to find two other instances of showings of this documentary uh, with live music. And uh, it's really exciting for me to, to have that live music first, and followed by the documentary. Have you always been a Birds fan all your life? Well, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, you know, I, I was not that aware. Prior to organizing this, I was not that aware of Gene Clark. I remember when Mr. Tambourine Man came out. I would have been 12. But you know, my knowledge of the birds happened more through high school and into college. And in college, I got to see them uh, in, uh, at, in the gymnasium at Skidmore College. And it's the loudest concert I have ever been to. My, my ears rang for three days. And the event that's coming up, uh, let's talk about the, the time, place, dates. Sure. It's at Space Theater, right, uh, 538 Congress Street, Thursday, May 14th. Doors open at 6.30. The event will start at 7. 
And if people want more information about the event and t how to get tickets and that sort of thing, where can they go? Tickets are available off the SPACE website, so that's space538.org, and more information is there, as well as on our website, wmpg.org. And the evening is a benefit. It, it's uh, sponsored by SPACE and by Four Sons Productions, the, the group that made the movie, and um, will benefit WMPG, all proceeds. Sounds like a good event. Ah, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. And thank you so much for, for covering it.